Hello, surface dwellers. Sponge bulge square brackets back again. I've got a niche game to talk about today. You've probably not heard of it. It's called Content Warning. And everyone and their grandma are making videos on it because it's a game made for YouTubers. It stands squarely in what I call social horror games. These are games where the point is less to win and more to just have fun with your friends, meet new people, and crucially, to generate content. Now, you don't have to play with the intention of recording. I've had a lot of fun with these games and not filmed a second of it, but no one can deny how entertaining it is to watch someone else get scared. <laughs> oh, you gotta be fu It is a proven formula, and when there's fresh meat, you better believe the flies come a buzzin'. And yes, I am a maggot in that pile. Now, I love content warning. I can see myself getting at least the same playtime out of it as I did Lethal Company, but I'm also beginning to see the writing on the wall. In the public eye, these games get stale fast. In less than a month, the big names will have moved on and there will only be scraps left for the rest of us. But how does the community change? I love these games and play long after the hype train has run out of track, so... Here's the life cycle. Stage 1. The hype train is at full speed. All the videos, all the streams, and all the buying. In-game, everyone is new, everyone is friendly, you're all exploring a new universe together, and it is the best time to meet new online buddies. Content Warning had the genius marketing strategy to give away free copies in their first 24 hours, and they gave away 6 million. So much content will be made from these 6 million players that I wouldn't be surprised if they got another 6 million in sales. Even a million would be a huge achievement for an indie game. The big names have moved on. In-game, most people are experienced. They know what they're doing, and the novelty has mostly worn off, but new players still frequently appear, and there's a joy to leading them through, watching them learn and grow. Not a bad time for meeting new friends, but you're gonna start seeing the elitists. Those who have binged the game and know how they want to play. Be warned, they will get irritated and kick you for not playing the optimal strats. Stage 3! The slow death! The novelty has worn off, and all but a few players from stage 1 are done. Any that stay are jaded, becoming the elitists they hated in stage 2. You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Now they want to win, to push their skill as far as possible, get the highest quota, defeat the spookiest ghost. They won't want new players, they want people like them, and so the game cannot grow as the noobs feel excluded. Modding support and updates can slip the game temporarily back into stage 2, but the glory days of stage 1 are a distant memory. This is as inevitable as your favourite tuber being a kiddie fiddler. And applies to all social horror games, though rarely the gameplay itself can be enticing enough to keep the veterans around for a long time. And for me, that game was Barrow Trauma. So, what can we do as gamers? What future can we expect? Well, for one thing, if you enjoyed other social horror games, get into content warning now. You want to be there for stage one because it's the golden age. You'll have way more fun with the other noobs than you will with the veterans later on. And the game is pretty damn cheap. Nice. Open your heart, meet some new internet friends, and enjoy the time you have now, because within a month of this video, it's gonna be into stage two. 
What we can expect is a lot more of these kind of games coming out. These games have taken off in the past and the big studios have largely ignored them, however, the rapid success of Lethal Company into content warning will catch their eye. The vultures are circling and we're going to be seeing a lot more social horror games coming out in the next couple years, mark my words. Hopefully this is good news, I love the genre and would love some further innovation. The indie companies can take risks that the big ones investors won't let them, so I'm hoping more indie studios take note, create games with unique aesthetics that can be played on any potato PC, and pray we're not inundated with AAA games going. Oh look at me, oh look at me, I got proximity chat and jump scares. Chat, remember the golden rule. Indie Uber Malas. And stop pre ordering games, or I'm going to pre order you a vasectomy with free shipping!